This is a chord voicings guitar lesson. I'm gonna show you a simple way to free you up on the fretboard by being able to take any one chord voicing and then being able to find that exact same chord anywhere else and everywhere else where it can possibly exist on the fretboard. And it's not about drilling or memorizing any chord shapes at all. After learning this little trick, it's gonna feel like you have unlimited chord voicing options for where and how to play any single chord on the guitar. As I usually try to do, I'm going to include some song examples along the way. And if you want some really cool chords to use as starting points to try this out with, you can get my awesome free chord chart and there is a link in the description below to get that with tons of really cool chords. And then you can find more places where those chords exist with this method I'm about to to teach you. I'm Jared from SoundGuitarLessons.com. This is episode 12 of a video lesson series about guitar chords and how to master them and understand the theory behind them on the guitar. In my last video, I explained an approach for being able to see the logic of the fretboard by taking any note and seeing where that same note exists in other places by using octave and unison interval shapes all over the guitar. This lesson should make sense on its own, but it does rely on that ability to be able to see options for where the same note exists in different places on the fretboard by moving them around. So if you do need to check out that previous lesson, please do. There's a link in the description to that, as well as a link to a playlist of this full lesson series. Now I've presented exercises in the past that are very kind of systematic and heavy duty and memorizing chord shapes in certain orders. And I really love that kind of stuff when it works and when it's designed in the right kind of way. But this lesson is going to be really fun because it's not like that at all. This is going to be much more playful and loose and doesn't have anything to do with drilling as much as exploring. If teaching you a chord by giving you a chord shape diagram is giving you a fish, then this lesson is definitely teaching you how to fish. First of all, what is a chord voicing? A chord voicing is just a specific order of notes in a chord and how they're spaced apart. It is the exact distance and interval relationships of the notes in a chord. So the chord C, for example, has C, E, and G in it. There's a C here, an E here, and a G here. That is one of the voicings of C major that we can find on the guitar. Now, if I take the C, the lowest note, and I move it up an octave, and I'm using the octave shape distance from the last lesson, then the notes are this, E, G, C. They're in a different order, and that is a different voicing. Now, that new voicing happens to be an inversion of the chord, but an inversion doesn't necessarily mean voicing, it just means that the chord does not have the root on the bottom anymore. When the lowest note is not the root, of the chord, that is an inversion of the chord. You'll end up playing a lot of inversions by doing this method because we're moving notes around and a lot of times the root will not be the lowest note, but this is not a lesson on inversions, it's just on finding different voicings. I will be talking about inversions and their functionality and how to use them in the context to use them in in a future lesson. So definitely make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned with this series. Both of those examples of C that I just played and are both called close position voicings because the notes are as close together as they possibly can be. If I go back to that root position C chord, C, E, G, and I take the middle note, the E, and I move that up an octave instead, and I'll move it up to this open E, now I have C, G, and E. This is called an open position voicing because now there's space in between some of the notes. A chord voicing is different than a chord shape. So this chord voicing, it's exact voicing, C to G, which is the one and the five, and then the three on top. That voicing, uh, this could be called a certain chord shape. As you see on the chord diagram, that same voicing in that same order can be, can be played somewhere else. For example, I can take the E and move it over to the fifth fret here. We learned about how to do that in the last lesson. And then the open G, I can move over to the fifth fret as well. Precisely the same voicing, different chord shape. Now, this exact same voicing can be played off the sixth string, different chord shape, same exact voicing. The chord itself is also different than the voicing. So we just found this voicing here. Well, if I move it up a half step, it's a different chord, but it's still the same voicing, this one, five, and then three on the top. So anywhere I play that, it's the same voicing, but moving through different chords, and like we just learned, that same exact thing can be done with different chord shapes as well. So a piano player can play the exact same voicing as I can play on the guitar. Obviously, that has nothing to do with the physical shape on the fretboard. So just know that a chord, a chord voicing, 
and a chord shape are all different things. What I just did a little bit of there, moving notes around to find different voicings of that same C chord is exactly what you're gonna be doing. Now let's go through more examples of that. We're gonna take three common open string chord shapes, A major, B7, and D minor seven, and we are going to explore new voicings for all of them using this process. These three chord shapes that we're starting with and tons more are in my free chord chart that I mentioned. That chord chart's called Chords with Color. It's super cool, definitely check it out and use it to play around with this stuff. All right, so let's start with A major and see if we can find some interesting other voicings to play this same chord. You actually don't need to know the theory of the chord labeling, the chord tone labeling uh, for this process, but it definitely helps to see that. And a lot of my series so far has been about being able to understand and find and learn the music theory behind what the exact notes are in a chord. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna take each note and I'll be pointing out what, what is what. Uh, for example, this is the five, this is the root, and this is the third of this chord. That's a complete triad. So I'm gonna go ahead and take away this open E and take away this, uh, sorry, this open A and the high open E. We have a complete chord. Now I'm just gonna start moving things around. Let's see what we can do. This five here, I'm gonna move it up an octave. And that is an octave shape that we wanna have memorized and learning that process and practicing that is from the last video. So I'm moving this E up to an octave up above the E and I still have these two notes down here. Now we have a problem because you can't play two notes on the same string. So now we have the root, the third, and the fifth. One, three, five, but I need to move one of these out of the way. So I have root, I just moved this five here. Let's take the third and move it down an octave. And again, we need to be able to see those interval shapes and that uh, there's the way to practice that from the last video. Now we have this new voicing that sounds gorgeous. That has the third on the bottom, so it is a first inversion chord. I absolutely love this. I'm actually gonna take this A here, the root, and I'm gonna move it over to here. And we know how to do that from finding the five below, five, six, seven, one. If that's confusing, that's also in the last video. If you can find it any other way, that's also totally fine. Three, one, five. This is a really nice voicing for a major or any major chord. It doesn't have open strings, so it's movable, and it is a first inversion chord. Now, just to point out the usefulness of an inversion like this, this exact progression is so common for songwriting and songs that we've all heard a million times. We take the one chord, and then the five chord is a first inversion leading to the six chord to make it a smooth, what's called voice leading. One, five chord, first inversion, six chord, instead of one, five, six. Not like that sounds bad, this just connects it in this beautiful flowing way. To learn about chord numbers, and I'm saying one chord, five chord, six chord, episode four in my series talks all about that. You can totally make sense of that by checking out that episode. Now, some song examples that use this. Uh, Tears in Heaven by Eric Clapton. Would you know my name If I saw you in Even the chord that I landed on here, later in the progression, same voicing, first inversion major chord, and I'm using that same shape here. Also, the beginning of that same progression. No woman, no cry. No woman, no cry. A couple more songs that come to mind with this. One of them is uh, Bob Dylan, uh, Don't Think Twice. Ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe. Da, 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 da. And another one is Somebody to Love by Queen. Each morning I get up. Actually, I want to show you. I filled in that chord just to make it a little fuller. Same thing with the octaves and, and these voicing options. Before I had three, one, five, and I went ahead and threw this three doubled in. I can see the octave between this three and this three. So just to fill that in to make it a little thicker, I went ahead and did that. You can do that anytime. Just start doubling notes. You can just move things all around like crazy. So that Queen song goes like this. Each morning I get up by time. Can barely stand on my feet Take a look in the mirror and cry Oh Lord, what you doing to me? Okay, let's do this B7 that I want to do here. In this chord we have the root, the third, the flat seven. The root again as an open B and then the five on top. Because we have the root 
uh, down here, I'm gonna eliminate this open B here and start moving things around just with these four notes. That's a complete seventh chord. Uh, check out the, my video on the theory of seventh chords if that's confusing at all, that's in this series. Root, third, flat, seven, five. I'm gonna start moving things around. This is a puzzle. If you start moving things around sometimes, it will be unplayable as far as your hand, you know, being able to physically do something. You have to keep moving, keep moving things. You'll see what I mean. I'm gonna take the third of the chord and move it up an octave. Okay, that voicing uh, works on the guitar. Now I have root, flat seven, three, five, that's great. I have to bar for that, awesome. Um, now I want to move things around more. I'm gonna take this five here and move it down an octave. Again, we just wanna see those octave options really clearly. That's a really standard root position, seventh chord voicing for dominant seventh chord and chord shape, very common. Uh, we used that in one of the exercises in a previous lesson. Okay, now I'm gonna get weird with it. Um, I'm gonna take the root and move it up an octave. So now I have five, one, three, but I have the flat seven and the one on the same string, according to how I moved it. So this is where it's kind of the puzzle. I want these three. Now I have to move this also to be able to play it. I'm gonna move that down an octave. So I see that octave shape. And now I get this really cool, very interesting voicing. This is the flat seven on the bottom third inversion dominant seventh chord. This is the first chord to um, Agua de Marco. Very famous uh, Brazilian bossa nova song. Okay, that's really interesting colorful chord with the flat seven on the bottom. Uh, let's move things around even more. I'm gonna take the third down an octave and now we have flat seven, three, five, one. Okay, nice and, nice and crunchy there. And now I want to move the flat seven up an octave. Okay, good. But now I have two notes on the same string. So I'm gonna move the five up an octave. And it's weird to kind of explain it. What you'll get good at is just moving things around and playing with it. Just shift, 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 shift. Start seeing these options. Here's a voicing I like. That's very useful. This is three, flat seven, one, five. I'm thinking of the root here actually, even though I'm not playing it. This is first inversion B7 chord. This would function nicely to resolve to an E chord, and I used kind of a C shape for an E chord there, so. So it's kind of fun to stumble on that. So there's another voicing for B7. We moved all around, we found this one, we got this one, we got this one, the flat seven on the bottom, and then I like, and we, we got a few in between as well. Just pointing out some moments that we had there. Okay, let's do, let's shift it just a little more. What if I move this up an octave, the, the root, and now we have three, flat seven, five, one, and then I'm gonna move the three up an octave. Ah, very common uh, voicing shape, flat seven, three, five, one, and that is B7. Um, this would be a shape, I mean, people use it all the time. Think of the intro to the, uh, another bossa nova song called Wave. <laughs> That tune, Frank Sinatra has a very famous version of it. I'm doing it as G7 there, but same shape, same voicing and shape. B7, third inversion. G7, third inversion. Found all those with this process so far. Okay, let's move to the other chord I wanna do. D minor seven, which actually is the other chord in that wave example. So this is D minor seven, root five, flat seven, flat three. This chord shape is in my chord chart. Um, and now let's start moving things around. Okay, I'm gonna take the uh, flat three up here and move it down an octave. And now I'm gonna have these three notes. The open D needs to move. I'll move it over here. This is unplayable. Well, I could kind of play it. Nobody ever would use this. It's ridiculous. So that's uh, root, flat three, five, flat seven. Uh, so we need to change that. I don't wanna have that be a chord I'm looking for. So I'm gonna take this top note here and move it down an octave. And now I have this, this, this and this D and the C are on the same string. I'm gonna move that up an octave. Ah, that's a voicing. This shape is D minor seven. I love it. I love that, uh, that we found that. There's other ways to find these things, but just this is one way to explore any chord voicing of any chord. Very nice. That is a third inversion D minor seven chord with the flat seven on the bottom. It just happens to be that the most um, functional, traditional uh, direction that that would go 
is actually our shape that we learned, uh, our exact chord shape that we learned for the dominant seventh chord with the third on the bottom. So that's pretty nice. Vo it's the voice leading idea again. And then that would resolve to C, lovely. D minor seven, third inversion. G7, first inversion. C, ah, you hear how well that functions. So let's find one other of, G, of D minor seven. Okay, I'm going to move this uh, bottom note up an octave. So now we have two notes on this string, so that also has to move up an octave. Notice I just do that quickly. Oh, if there's two notes on one string, move the other one as well. Now we get this note, flat three, flat seven, root, and five. I love that. I absolutely love this voicing. This is D minor seven with the third in the bass. Sounds kind of major because it's the same as what a major six chord would be. Don't worry about that. I'll talk about six chords soon in other videos. Uh, D minor seven. Okay, nice. It just so happens that this would functionally lead to this exact dominant seven chord shape that we learned up here on B7. The flat seven in the bass, third inversion. So here's a nice resolution from this D minor seven. And then to C. Nice. So that chord shape, you can actually use that re to replace pretty much any D minor chord um, ever, even if it's not a seven, you're adding the seven to it and then turning into this colorful kind of inversion option. Um, so just pointing out that that is quite a, a unique sound compared to maybe if you always play this and you want something a little different, this can function as, as replacing it. And that's actually exactly what my chord chart is about, finding colorful replacement options of really standard chords that we're uh, used to and maybe sick of. I just want the fretboard and the guitar to be your playground. This is, notice how this is not a systematic thing. It's really exploring, playing, scratching your head, thinking about it, moving the puzzle around, just have fun with it. In the future, I'll definitely talk about some functional harmony and voice leading, which I did some of in this lesson saying, the most common place for this chord to move to would be this, or the most pleasing sound, what we're kind of expecting to hear is this movement. So that'll be fun to talk about that Stuff in the future just make sure you're subscribed so you get those lessons but for now just give this method a shot for yourself and again grab my free chord chart called chords with color to give you a ton of really cool voicings to start with and then start moving around and the chord chart itself has really interesting um, awesome voicings but they are all root position voicings and just in one place so kind of gives you a starting point to find all kinds of fun things and start to explore around you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color or use the link in the description I'm here with a new lesson every week and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Until then, take care and thanks so much.